uh, I um, the persons. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to, to, to support them. You know, uh, uh, go to bat for them so they can stay uh, uh, training, concentrate on training. They don't have to worry about it. You know, so yeah, you know, there were fees involved. After the fact, if it was worth it, they made a thousand, a thousand, two thousand. But, you know, you don't take no money from the fighter like yeah. that. You know, five thousand or better, then you know I bust my ass to make make that. Then, you know, but I learned the ins and outs. Then I was ridiculed, I was uh, insulted. Or, you know, people that don't know me don't know what my intentions, my motives were yeah. for becoming an advocate within the sport of women's boxing. You know, you know, and yeah, you know, I just kept doing what I what, what I needed to do. You know. And, and, Ten years later, yeah, I am the executive director of the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame. Yeah. Sue Fox, our president and founder, you know. Uh, and she's Phoenix. based in Phoenix or Vegas? No, she's out in Portland. Okay, she's okay. on the West Coast. Okay. Um, and Sue Fox, you know, uh, she saw she saw the uh, potential and she saw the honesty and the transparency of what this is all about with Eddie. And so she plays. She's she's always supported me. You know, there's several people that supported me and. They understand where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They they understand where I'm at with respects to advocating for women fighters. I talked to all. You know, after learning, you know, because I knew Mauricio and Jose Sule and Suleiman because I had them. May he rest in peace. He, yeah. he was WBC champ many years ago. So um, through that, I started working on behalf of those that are within the top 15. Get us a shot. You know, bring us up. Give us a volunteer. You know, I started basically begging. For the opportunity, mm -hmm. some got it, some don't. Some were mismatches that were not comfortable. I wasn't comfortable with, and so you know, I, I just continued. You know, like, like I said, Mia, St. John, Christy Martin. I started off with Brooke Deardorff, and along the line, I had, you know, I had the blessing of, of representing Mary McGee when she fought Holly Holm. Um, I had, you know, I can go down the line, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many, you know, I've worked closely with Melissa Hernandez as well, uh, Miriam Lamare, the French uh, former world champ, I've worked with her, uh, currently I'm working with uh, Susie Kateki, you know, with, uh, with the Serranos as an agent, you know, uh, mm -hmm. which means... Basically, I, I'm the guy that's going out there knocking on the doors. I'm the guy that's, you know, picking up the communications with their manager, Jordan, you know. And, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've been given the privilege of, of, you know, what do you call it? Working with them and, and, and using my ability, contacts, and the reputation to make stuff happen like this fight with Jasmine. You know, that was a team effort. You know, it wasn't nothing that I did that was great. It was a team effort. Um you know, and I'm excited for them. Mm -hmm. you know, I jump around because my mind is, is is I'm trying to go back, but I'm in New York. I'm reminiscing. My mind is, is all over the place. But women's boxing to me is very important. You know, women's boxing to me is is not more important than my family, but it's just as important mm -hmm. because to me it is again it's, it's not a percentage. You know, everybody work. You work. You deserve to get paid for your work. You know, it's not about some guys. Get five thousand and tell the girls it's twenty five hundred. They, you know, so now you're stealing twenty. You're stealing twenty five hundred from them. Then not only are you giving them twenty five hundred, you're telling them, hey, now you got to give me my percentage, which is twenty five thirty percent. So now that doesn't fucking make sense. And that's why I came into this. I came into this to educate the girls. You know, they don't need none of these female boxers need a manager. All they need is to manage themselves and have someone they can trust that can do the stuff that a manager would do. You know, mm -hmm. get them signed and let them. All fighters should manage themselves. Yeah, you have an agent that can knock the. You know, you can't train and stress and sponsorship. That's why you have me or a team to go do all these things. That said, um, from when I started to now, I, I can comfortably say that you know it's been some progress with respects to the action. Mexico, we know, is it's the mecca of women's boxing in this case. Argentina is dead. It's dying. That's. All those promoters, all of them stole from the girls. They're all the girls been educated, you know, and there's been some improprieties, you know. Uh, like with the Farias when she, uh, not Farias, Soledad Matisa, when she fought the, the rematch with Jelena. A promoter told her it was the next amount of money, and it was triple that, you know. Mm. So she let them go, and, and that's the thing. There's a few promoters, uh, a couple in Argentina, a couple, you know, elsewhere, you know, um, I don't like controversy. I'm, I'm real. I'm short for words. You know, yeah. I don't like controversy. But the thing, the matter is, 
my responsibility, not 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 as a, a person with the WBAN or, or the executive director of the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame, but morality, mm -hmm. you know, tells me, you know what, that's the right thing to do. You know, that's the right thing to do. I, I, I come in as Eddie, you know. I, I'm just Eddie, you know. If I've been blessed to represent, I've been blessed to um, travel, it's because the fighters, these ladies, they allow me and their team allow me to become part of their team, like Diana Cordero, Shannon O'Connell, Susie Ramadan as well. I mean, I'm now working with Hannah Gabriel. She she acquired me as her agent, so we're working on a title fight for her in Costa Rica in March. Um, a lot of things, you know. Uh, you know, um, women's boxing to me has so much potential. It, it has it has the potential this year to break that glass ceiling. Mm. You know, with you have Amanda, Clarissa, Marlene, just as far as it just was signed by Oscar Floyd. He's looking in, in, into a couple. Of, he's got one female, but he's looking into other females, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's that was the goal. The goal was to bring attention to the sport, bring like some some kind of of, of you know. People have to really you have to see the sport. You have to not only see this. You have to be involved. You have to read in order for you to really understand the sport. You know, these are not women that box these are not women boxers these, these are athletes these are fighters like uh in the beginning i was writing female boxes women boxes and i stopped all that because they're athletes these are athletes these are not female boxers these are not that girls that fight these are yeah they're women but they're athletes so once we separate that and we understand that they're athletes that they're not uh girls that uh just decide to put on gloves uh, the respect will be there, you know. Uh, um, the opportunities will open up some more. And that takes people like us, people that have you as a reporter covering the fights, reporting on it, me as an advocate, others. And, you know, start weeding out these, these rats, you know. these You know, they're stealing from the girls, you know. They're, they're, they're mismatching them. Um, then they're, they're not giving them the real opportunities that they deserve. It goes for the sanctioning bodies. All sanctioning bodies know me and they know that I've argued but I've argued professionally and I've been firm I mean I've been angry with why you giving uh, uh, other people the opportunity when you know hey we've already went through a certain sequence of procedures to place this person in either a mandatory or a voluntary position example Shannon O'Connell won the silver title she's defended it three times we were supposed to win the title maybe defend it once and immediately Alicia Ashley they opted to, her team opted to give a voluntary, we okay, after the voluntary, win or lose, we take the winner. WBC agreed. It's not Mauricio, because Mauricio is the president, but the WBC is Malte Mueller. Real nice guy, you know. At the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, it, is, it didn't happen. Fatuma Sarika defeated Actually, now they're discussing the rematch. But see, that's the thing. That's the way. There's this. This is an impropriety in so far as teams had discussed prior. We 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 basically negotiated and everything, and put it on hold based on the voluntary that they wanted to seek. They thought they were going to beat this girl. They didn't. So you out because the thing was we take the winner. And I went back and forth with that. And again, I don't like controversy. We colleagues. You know, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but a manager, mm -hmm. you know, we colleagues and stuff like that. So out of respect, I just let it go. You know what I'm saying? Out of respect. And we got, no matter what, we got next. No matter what, we got next. No matter what, we got next. Okay. That said, uh, we didn't get next. So shining forth for the WBO, um, for the WBO uh, Oriental title, you know, and... Um, Again, you know, now a lot of the girls that have promoters are the ones that uh, the sanctioning body should begin to give uh, an opportunity to. 